Okay everyone, so we're on lesson 7 of our virtual learning series of lessons and I thought this week I'd make a video to help you guys with this topic. Today we're going to be looking at storage devices and cloud computing. Our learning objective for today is to be able to identify the three main types of storage, to be able to define what cloud storage is and name some advantages and disadvantages. We should also be able to understand some factors that affect the choice of storage devices. So going straight into it, a storage device is a hardware component that stores data for a long period of time. It can be referred to as secondary storage. This means that the data stored on it is not accessed directly by the CPU. The data stored on it can be referred to as non-volatile. This means that when the power is turned off, the data remains on the device. There are three main types of storage, magnetic, solid state and optical. Magnetic storage uses magnetic fields to store data on devices. Some examples of magnetic storage are hard disk drives and floppy disks. Solid state storage refers to storage that uses microchips to store data. It is similar to RAM but is non-volatile, meaning when the power is turned off the data on it stays. Some examples of solid state storage include solid state drives, SD cards and USB flash drives. Optical storage refers to storage that is read using a laser beam. The data is usually stored on disks that spin in optical drives. The disks are usually made of plastic and sometimes can be made of metal. Some examples of optical storage include CDs, DVDs and Blu-ray. It's common to be asked to compare magnetic and solid state storage. We're going to compare hard disk drives and solid state drives. Hard disk drives are considered to be cheaper than solid state drives. They're also considered to have a higher capacity, meaning they can store more data. They also have a longer read-write cycle, meaning they will generally last a bit longer as well. Some advantages of solid-state drives include that the fact they are faster than hard disk drives. They also don't need to be defragmented. They're considered to be shock-proof, meaning if you drop it, it's less likely to break. They have a lower power consumption, meaning the battery life on devices will be a bit longer. And they basically make no noise. This makes them ideal for portable devices such as laptops and tablets. So optical storage is becoming less common these days, but you might be asked to identify some advantages and disadvantages in some exam questions. Some advantages of optical storage are they're cheap and they are portable, meaning you can move them around quite easily. Some disadvantages of optical storage are that they have a low storage capacity. This means you can't store that much data on them and they can be easily damaged. This means if you drop them, they might get scratched. That means they might not work if you try to use them. Now, as I said earlier in the video, all of these storage devices can be referred to as secondary storage. This means that the data stored on it is not accessed directly by the CPU. It also means that the data is non-volatile. This means that when you turn the power off, the data on the secondary storage devices remains. So when you're saving a file, you'll most likely be saving it on one of the devices that we've just gone through. You might be saving it locally. You might be saving it externally. If you're saving it locally, it just means you're saving it on the computer that is right in front of you. So when you're saving a file, you need to make sure you save the file using a relevant name and you might want to save it in a folder that is relevant to the topic you are working on. If I'm writing a report maybe about a science topic, I might want to name the file relevant to the topic I'm working on and I might want to save the file in a folder called science. Here are some keywords that you need to remember. Save just means updating a file. Save as means creating another version of a file. It's quite common to see these things if you're using Microsoft Office products. Now, you might not want to use local storage. You might want to use cloud storage. The cloud is basically another word for the internet and cloud storage is storage that you can access over the internet. Some examples of cloud storage include Apple iCloud, Dropbox, Google Drive, and even Microsoft OneDrive. There are lots of reasons for why you'd use cloud storage, but the main reason is you just don't want to carry around lots of little storage devices with you. Some advantages of cloud storage are that you can access your files from anywhere as long as you have an internet connection. It's a good form of backup storage. You can usually store data on it for free up to a limit and you don't require expensive hardware. Some disadvantages of cloud storage are that you need an internet connection Without the internet connection, you will not be able to access your files. It can be expensive on the long term. If you're paying for a subscription, the cost will eventually add up. Cloud storage is also more likely to be hacked when compared to local storage. 
This is because you don't have full control over the ownership of your data and where it is stored. Finally, we're going to be looking at the factors that affect the choice of storage devices. The first thing to always think about is the cost of the device itself. You need to think about whether or not the cost is within the budget that you have. The next thing to think about is the storage size. How much data can it hold and will it be enough to store all of your files? The physical size is also important to think about. How big is the device? Is it portable? Will it fit in the actual device that you want it to go into? Performance and reliability are also important factors. You need to think about how fast can you read and write data to the device. You also need to consider whether or not the device will break easily. You might also want to consider the brand of the storage device. Some brands are more reputable than others. This means that they might be known for creating good quality devices or poor quality devices. So that ends our video lesson. You should now be able to identify the three main types of storage. You should be able to explain what cloud storage is and name some advantages and disadvantages. You should also be able to understand some factors that affect the choice of storage devices.